So what is Power Pages? So in this video, we're going to cover the concept behind Microsoft Power Pages. Um, we're going to discuss the features, the functionalities, and how effectively companies benefit from using this tool. And I'm very pleased to be joined the video, in this video by Nick Dolman, who is a specialist in Power Pages. Nick has been working with Microsoft many years. He's also been an MVP for many, many years in Power Pages. So let's get started. So why do we use Power Pages? So I use Power Pages basically to create external facing websites on the Power Platform. So using the Power Platform, we can integrate directly with data in Dataverse and so forth. We're going to explore that. But the first thing I really do is I design and build my website. I would start with a header and a structure which means that we work on the sitemap, the navigations, you know, the buttons and so forth. How do we navigate from one page to another? You can also work on the site title and logo. So you have editors, um, designers to kind of edit those items. And then from there, very quickly, you start building content, right? So the next thing is you want to start creating your web pages. And here the web pages are made of effectively components and you have your lists um, which are composed of your views in the kind of old terminology. So lists really lists your records from a database. And in this case, you can see Dataverse records are stored natively in Dataverse, but you can also use virtual tables and use SharePoint lists and Azure uh, SQL in using virtual tables. And then so the list will list your records. The form is interacting with your records by having a form overlay on top of them where you can create, edit, view more details about each of the records. You can, of course, also add sections to kind of um, have uh, play with the layout of your web page and having specific elements uh, in, in specific sections of your web page. You can, of course, add text, button, images, video, iframe, and so forth, right? Now for the next two elements, I'll throw it back to you, Nick, because I haven't used a lot mm -hmm. dashboard and reports in Power BI with Power Pages, nor the chatbot. So could you give us a quick explanation on those two, please? Yeah, for sure. Cause you can, that's a power of Power Pages. You can build like a, a website with content and all that regular stuff as you can with anything, right? But then when you start getting the more power, obviously tying into Dataverse, which is really cool. But then also, yeah, you can embed Power BI and then also use the context of the user that's viewing that site with uh, list filtering in uh, Power BI. So they can only see the data that they're supposed to see. Um, so that's really cool. And then also, of course, now with Microsoft Copilot Studio, build those chatbots and then integrate those into your website, whether you're pulling the data from you know back in dataverse or even just from your website using that to interact with um, your users using a chatbot so yep so let's continue and look at the next element which is styling right where you can effectively style your style to the desired layout you want um, using some templates that are available when you start a new website you can pick from existing templates you get also themes that you can then tweak. So you can change the colors, the background, the font of those themes. And this is where I'll um, get back to you, Nick. If you can explain us what is custom CSS uh, used for, and maybe if you can also um, discuss the Bootstrap framework. Yeah, so Power Pages uses a, a framework that was originally created by Twitter years ago called Bootstrap. And it's just a, it's kind of a, um, a template with classes and everything to do the styling. So then you can add your own CSS uh, files to your Power Pages site. And thank you for that explanation. Now let's move on to the configuration piece. Can you give us a quick overview of what do we mean when we configure an external facing website? <laughs> in, in a very short uh, time, yeah, there's a lot of interesting things. So let's just, I'm just going to go a little bit randomly, maybe not exactly, but we'll talk about the site settings really is sort of like, you know, if you set up your computer, you have registry settings to turn on certain things and turn off certain things in power pages. Those are really site settings. So you can turn on like when you're going through, we'll talk about authentication later, for example, but when you configure some of the authentication bits, site settings will get updated. And of course it controls pretty much the whole website. 
Uh, there are multilingual capabilities, which taps into the multi-language of Dataverse. So you provision your alternate languages in Dataverse, and then you would turn it on your site, and then your users can now flip to different languages on your site. Um, content snippets, it's a great way to create a library with different uh, bits of content, whether it's text or HTML or anything else that you can reuse in multiple places of your site. I like to use content snippets along with multilingual because content snippets has the language uh, attribute. So you can have content snippets in different languages. And then depending on what site the user is viewing in, they will view that content snippet in that language. So just really makes the whole translations of sites easier. Of course, there's other little bits like web website redirects and web links. So we can kind of navigate the site easier by using these concepts and placing them in our code or other spots of our site. And of course, with search, you know, search configuration, tying into the Dataverse search, and then some of those other things too. So you can actually not only visit the site, but able to search and find data that you're looking for. Because again, this is the power of Power Pages, the ability to tap into Dataverse. And then, you know, other little things like shortcuts to, uh, to move around your site. So a lot of great things you can spend a ton of time in here that will really, you know, make your site much more functional, much more usable and, and, and much more powerful. Cool. So let's move on to the integration piece where we can effectively integrate Power Pages with other systems, um, whether that's document storage, DocuSign payments, we'll review each one of these. So let's start with document storage, right, where you can use Power Pages to effectively integrate with storage of documents. So there is native storage in Dataverse, like Dataverse nodes. You can also use Dataverse files columns, a specific column type where you can store your, your files. You can effectively also integrate with a native SharePoint document integration, and you can also integrate with Azure storage if you have larger documents you want to store, right? Also, you can integrate with DocuSign. So this is pretty new by the time we record this video where you can effectively integrate with digital signatures if you have some specific forms that need to be signed electronically. Now, Nick, I'll pass on to you for the payments integration. If you can elaborate on this, please. Payments, that isn't preview. So you can't even, even if you wanted to go prod with preview features, you can't do that with payments just yet because obviously this is, a, you know, you don't want to screw up credit card. But really what this does is allow you to sell services using Power Pages, whether it's like an event registration or maybe a donation. And that will take you to the a Stripe payment page. That currently it's Stripe is what's out of the box. Hopefully they'll add other ones, I'm not sure. But then you once you pay that, then it will basically send that token back that confirmed or not confirmed the payment went through. And then you can update your order, or your registration. And then, yeah, because, and then through the regular Stripe configuration, which is outside of Power Pages, then the money just shows up in your bank a few days later, um, if you have how, depending on how you have Stripe set up. Cool, amazing. So let's move on now to a piece where I'm actually not familiar at all, Nick, so I will need a bit more of your support here. The administrative <laughs> piece. Can you walk us through each of the features of the administration? Yeah, for sure. And I can, you know, once you're once you've built your site, it looks pretty, your clients are excited and hopefully they will be. But now it's time to turn it on and make it to, you know, go to production and you know begin to monitor what's coming in. And I know they're talking tapping tapping more into uh, purview and application insights but of course you want to you don't want to have that power apps portals domain you actually want your www.abccompany.com uh, configuring that you know domain and other things turn on content delivery network would help the speed because that means it's going to store bits of your power pages site all over the world so if you have visitors from all over the world they're going to hit those different um you know, those different uh, websites are a lot faster, get that content a lot quicker. And of course, there's the site checker that will go and check some of these things. Maybe if you're doing some testing or you want to do some geofencing of sorts, you can restrict the IP. Um, and of course, using the PAC CLI, yes, you can do this through user interface, but a lot of this could be done more and more through the Power Platform command line interface to kind of automate these types of things or, you know, set up developer environments and that kind of stuff. So this is this is an area that's evolving very quickly and new features are coming all the time and there's some more stuff coming in the release plan. So yeah, this is a this is an important part of the project. I would make sure you allocate quite a few um, resort like some resources or time to this in a Power Pages project, the administration side and the rollout and the go live and all that. Nice, cool. So let's now talk about the customize and extend. 
we can actually add our power pages websites to solutions and then once they're part of the solution we can actually set up pipelines to move our entire website from our dev to our uat or to our prod um, and that's just using those the new dataverse pipelines or we could use azure devops pipelines however you want to do it liquid is a markup language so it's really it's a way to kind of dynamically alter the look and feel of your site but also pull data as well um, it is actually not a microsoft language it is a language that was it was open source, but it's been made very popular by a company actually in Canada called Shopify. Now, Shopify is an e-commerce platform, um, but they're the ones that really made this uh, language well-known and famous. And of course, the team, First Power Pages, as we know, came originally from a company called ADX Studio. So ADX Studio decided to utilize Liquid to... to um, you know, extend Power Pages at the time or Power Apps Portals or whatever portals is what it was called before. So what it can do is you can, um, we can use things like Fetch XML that I think people, developers are very familiar with. We can retrieve data from Dataverse and we can begin to manipulate how it looks and feels. So we could build very customized Dataverse driven interfaces using Liquid. Now I'm just going to, and then we would build those in web templates that you have, you know, listed there. Um, and the, and, but you could liquid put liquid in like content snippets and other areas of your website. Now, the thing is with um, date with the liquid, it can read data, but it can't write data. So the way it works is it gets um, com basically almost compiled or configured on the server. So you will never even see liquid code. If you view the source on your browser from a power pages site, you'll never see liquid code there. Um, but you will see the result of liquid code, but because it's come done on the server side, it's faster, but it also, you can't write back. So how would you write back if you want to build a custom interface? Uh, you have it listed there, the web API. The web API is a way, it's kind of a, you call that through JavaScript and then you can, any data manipulation you do on your page, of course, on the, the configurable side, just a regular form submit that we looked at earlier um, when you talked about forms, but here is where you can actually have it write directly back to Dataverse and have a bit of a back and forth without having to navigate away from the page or do a form submission. Um, that's one way to do it. And then of course, if we, and that will just handle, it's amazing what the web API can do. And then we you notice here, that's one of a new feature, the cloud flow and power automate, meaning you can call a power automate flow as well from your customized web page, And then of course you could write back to Dataverse that way, or, but the cool thing about Power Automate is you now have access to those thousands of connectors. So if you wanted to, basically the the example they give in Docs that I, I sort of encourage people to take a look at, it's super simple. But you put in your the name of your city, and then that will on a Power Pages site, and then it will call a Power Automate that will call the web the uh, the weather service like the MSN weather service, and then give you the weather report back that you can display on your website. But of course, you could use Power Automate to you know, talk to a shipping system or do some other calculations if there's other things like you know currency conversion that sort of things. So this is where you know Power Pages can do a lot out of the box with our point and click and low code techniques. But now that we get into this area, now we can do amazing things with pro developer techniques with uh, Power Pages. Cool, perfect. So let's move on to now to security, where you can set effectively side visibility of a website. So you can switch on or off the visibility of a website. You can play with web roles that you can assign specific pages permission to web roles. You can assign table permissions to specific web roles. And um, yeah, if you can explore a bit and extend a bit on this. Yeah, so it, uh, the, the web roles, uh, it is it parallels what's in Dyna uh, Dynamics 365 or Dataverse in terms of security. You can stack them up. Now, the reason why it's a completely different system is you have to remember, and maybe we didn't touch on this, a user in Power Pages is someone who comes from the outside and authenticates. And I see you have authentication there, which there's a lot of different ways they can authenticate with Azure B to C or Entra, OpenID, Google, Facebook. There is an, there is an out of the box authentication mechanism too, but that's great for testing, but I would never use it in production. But then you have that concept of a user. That user in Power Pages actually is a contact record, contact record in Dataverse. So that's why the security system is different because we have to tie the security, the web roles, um, the page permissions, the table permissions, which tie to web roles, but they're linked to a contact 
not a system user that we're used to in Dataverse. So that's why it's different, but it parallels. If you understand one, you can. it's very similar to the other. Of course, we have child permissions and things. So A, you can lock out different, not lock out or protect your web pages that has static content using web permissions or sorry, page permissions. But then we can also protect the Dataverse data. So you log in to view your invoices, for example. You don't want to be able to view uh, all the other, all the customers be able to view each other's invoices. You want your customer to only view their invoices. So that's where you would begin to set up the security of what they're allowed to see. Um, of course, uh, to update Dataverse data. So people get nervous of like, oh, if we create a website where we can update Dataverse data, we want to make sure we're protected you're 100% protected. You have to turn these security things on in order for people to do anything. Right, perfect. So the last feature that we're going to explore in this video today is Copilot. So all the AI powered features that are coming with uh, Power Pages. So if I understand correctly, you can even generate the whole site. Is that correct, Nick? Yeah, it can do things like generate the generating. You can go in and create your whole site. Now it can kind of give you, you know, as people have been playing with copilots, you know that there's, you still, I feel you still need to know what you're doing, know how the configuration works. It can do a lot of that busy work for you, begin to build out some pages and some concepts, but you're still going to want to spend time and go back and refine, um, update your prompts to make sure that everything looks exactly how you want to do it. And then even within, even if you, you know, don't even generate your site or start generating your site, there are little other little co-pilots to help you generate some of the text, help you generate some of the pages, even the theme, you could say, hey, match the theme of Ikea or something, and then it will go out and grab the colors, the Ikea colors that you could apply to your site. Um, and then also be able to generate the forms. Now the forms are pretty basic. It's based on one table only, where I find most of the projects that I work on, it is gonna be a multi-table with the whole you know, data model that you need to do. Power Pages Copilot isn't quite there yet. Hopefully it'll be there soon, where we can actually do the multiple table configuration using Copilots. And then of course, the other Copilot, that if you're using VS Code, or sorry, Visual Studio Code to do a lot of your, your pro dev stuff, you're building your custom web templates and everything. There is a co-pilot there, which is great because it will generate JavaScript, um, specific HTML and liquid um, for helping you extend and build your site. And that co-pilot's actually pretty powerful. Like you could say, generate me some JavaScript that's going to highlight lines on my list and it will generate it very well. Or, you know, generate me some JavaScript that's going to hide and show different sections based on this. And um, it works with that. So the cool thing is, remember, Copilot is it's Copilot, not Autopilot or Pilot. Um, it's here to help you. Um, but like at the end of the day, you need to you need to know what you're doing as well. And it's great. It's a huge time saver, um, hopefully. And it's just, it seems to be getting better all the time. So uh, yeah, you're right. By the time this video comes out, there might be some new Copilots or some new AI features built into Power Pages. Um, and even with that, we also extending that to our users. So someone comes to our site um, using the chatbot integration, they can actually use that would be sort of a, a co-pilot within the site. So you can instead of trying to search information or find information and say, OK, I'm a customer, show me all my invoices from last year and going to that view and finding the filters, I can just ask the co-pilot on the website, hey, go find me, how much did I spend with this company last year? And those types of questions I think are definitely in the works that we can extend that to our end users or visitors to our site. So that's pretty cool. Wow, cool. Amazing, Nick, thank you. I think we made a good round of all the features <laughs> of Power Pages. Thank you again for taking the time and I no hope problem. to see you soon on one of the conferences and to for everyone sure, else, yeah. see you in the next video. Great, thanks Danny.